I thought I knew what spiritual hygiene was, but it turns out I was a bit off the mark. Rise up like a shot shot, shine up like a shining star, stand up like a statue, raise up like a shot shot, rise up like a shot shot, shine up like a star star, stand firm like a statue. Oh my lord On the up, I ain't I keep it on the up I ain't I keep it on the up On the up, I ain't I keep it on the up I ain't I keep it on the up Through all of these days, stand firm at the top While we live under the stars I ain't I keep it on the up I ain't I keep it on the up Hi, I'm Aaliyah Zealous. I've been wanting to work on my spiritual hygiene for a while now, but when I sat and thought about what that actually meant to work on my spiritual hygiene and listed out things that I could do to work on my spiritual hygiene, I realized that I wasn't entirely clear on what that means and what that looks like. So first, I needed to define what spiritual hygiene means to me. I had some idea of what it looked like in a religious sense, but I wanted a better understanding for myself. So I went to my handy dandy dictionary and I looked up a couple of words. First, I looked up the word spirit and got some interesting definitions. Spirit, the non-physical part of a person which is the seat of emotions and character, the soul. Those qualities regarded as forming the definitive or typical elements in the character of a person, nation, or group, a particular way of thinking, feeling, or behaving, and an animating or vital principle held to give life to physical organisms. The things that stuck out to me the most within these definitions were character, vital principle held to give physical life, and a particular way of thinking, feeling, and behaving. This was very meaningful to me because some of the things that I had written down to work on my spiritual hygiene were things like warm baths, meditating, journaling, spending time in nature, and none of those things are bad at all. However, they weren't intentional enough. And I knew if I wanted my spiritual hygiene to be effective, they had to be intentional. Like, based on this new definition, having a warm bath is nice, but what does having a warm bath have to do with developing my character or my principles or defining the way I behave? I didn't want my spiritual hygiene to be superficial or just about self-care. I want to meaningfully cleanse my spirit and keep up with my spiritual hygiene. And based on these definitions, I have more clarity on what that means and what that looks like. To engage in my spiritual hygiene, I concluded that I need to work on three things. My thoughts, my feelings, and my behavior. In doing so, this will put more emphasis on developing my character, my principles and beliefs, and my way of living and being, which are all core things that have to do with your spirit, therefore nourishing my spirit. So how do I do that and what does that look like? First, each category needed to be clarified. I needed to know what exactly it was that I wanted to accomplish in each of these categories. So for example, with my thoughts, I want them to be positive, clear, uplifting, calming, encouraging, and full of gratitude. Since I clarified the direction that I want my thoughts to go, then I was able to pinpoint the activities and rituals that would help me accomplish those goals. Some of those tools were affirmations that would help me reinforce these ways of thinking, journaling, but I wanted journaling to be a little bit different. You know how when you were in school and you got in trouble and your teacher would make you sit at your desk and write out 50 times, I will not disrupt the classroom over and over again in your notebook? I want to take that approach with journaling. I realized that I didn't feel like it was enough to just journal out my thoughts with no direction. I can do brain dumps to help my thoughts feel more clear, but that doesn't necessarily help with 
reprogramming my thoughts the way that I want to. So I thought, why not take the affirmations and thoughts that I want to use to reinforce this new way of thinking and writing it over and over again in my journal every day to physically write it down. My line of reasoning for this is that it's pretty well known that writing down your goals makes you 42% more likely to achieve them. So I thought, why not writing out my thoughts making me 42% more likely to live by them? More tools for my thoughts were prayer for gratitude and chanting and declarations, which is new for me. This goes in the same mindset as the journaling, whereas saying my thoughts over, or saying my thoughts and affirmations over and over again out loud in a session to help promote a more positive way of thinking. At first, I thought that prayer was going to do this for me and I thought that I could just write my own prayer. But as I sat down to write one, I realized that it wasn't coming out the way that I wanted it to. Because I was writing out things that I wanted to declare and affirm to myself over and over again and Prayer wasn't structured that way. So I wound up looking up the definition of prayer and for the most part all of the definitions define prayer as establishing a connection with your God or your chosen deity and for requesting for help and expressing gratitude. Which makes so much sense to me because I've only ever experienced prayer where that was the purpose. So I realized that prayer has a specific function that wasn't fully going to cover everything that I wanted to do when it came to my thoughts. It was very useful for having gratitude and establishing a rapport with your higher power, but there wasn't necessarily anything that I wanted to ask for help with. More so, I wanted to declare and affirm new thoughts for myself and chanting Chanting and declarations seemed like a more effective way to do that. Next, we have my feelings. You'll begin to see that each of these three categories actually play into each other and interweave into one another. I clarified that I wanted to feel calm, happy, and energized, excited, loved, self-assured, bold and courageous, grounded and present, and intuitively in tune. I don't have to feel all of these emotions at the same time or all at once, but I do want them to be able to be within reach or to have the ability to put myself in these emotional states at will so that for the majority of my life, these are the emotions that I've learned to default to and be the driving emotions behind how I handle and manage things in my life. Some of the tools that I realized would be the most effective for me in this category is music. Music that readily puts me in any of these emotional states. Also meditation for feeling calm, grounded, present and energized. Sitting in silence, preferably by a body of water, could also be a part of meditation but could also be another aspect of just being present and calm. I also have accomplishing my goals. I noticed over the years that when I accomplish my goals, I feel I feel like I build more of a trusting relationship with myself. In turn, I feel more self-assured, bold, and courageous with most of my actions. Now on to my behavior. When I visualized how I wanted to behave, I gathered that I wanted to behave in a self-honoring, reliable, calm, self-assured, and authentic way. These were, for the most part, ways that I wanted to behave towards myself and these were the things that I came up with that were the most pressing on my mind. And it was a little difficult to come up with things that would help me accomplish these goals, especially since they're towards myself, but I managed to come up with a little something something. First is keeping my word to myself and of course others. I think that's been a major problem for me with keeping my word to myself because Usually you're last on the totem pole in your own mind. So I'll tell myself that, yeah, I'll go to bed at a reasonable hour just after this last chapter or yeah, I'll exercise, but I'll put it off until tomorrow instead of doing it today. I believe keeping your word to yourself is so underrated, but it's such a high form of honoring yourself. It helps you believe yourself to be more reliable and over time with consistency, it helps you to be overall more self-assured. Next is really thinking about if I want to do something before I agree to it and giving myself time to think about it before responding. Oftentimes, I think a lot of us can relate to agreeing to something or saying that we can do something without actually first taking a step back and checking in with ourselves to see if we actually have the capacity to do it. This can be a hard one, especially for my fellow people pleasers, but it's always such a gratifying one when you can execute it. These are just some of the actions that I was able to pinpoint when it comes to achieving my goals when it comes to my behavior. But if there are any other thoughts and exercises you guys can come up with, 
I would love to hear it. So that is my new plan when it comes to my spiritual hygiene. I actually can't wait to dive into actually doing these because I've been itching to put some of these to the test already. I think that these will be much more intentional than just blindly doing self-care and thinking that it's feeding my spirit when it doesn't necessarily have a purpose or a goal when it comes to my spirit. So that's all I have for today. Until next time. At the top, while we live under the stars, I and I keep it on the up, I and I keep it on.